I might vlog this week. I mean, is that a thing? Is that even a thing anymore? Do people still vlog? Because I have been watching a lot of vlogs recently. And whilst I feel like I'm not in the mood to maybe review a book, it feels like the calm, genteel sort of thing that I need in my life right now. So, I have just arrived home from work. It's Saturday the 1st of May. Technically, my bank holiday weekend now starts. Sorry about the bedding in the background. Let's try and make this more presentable. Oh, there's a shirt there. Well, it's never going to happen. I didn't make my bed today. So, work was fine. Basically, because of the days I work, I now have three days off until I'm next in. So this is technically my bank holiday weekend, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Other people will be back in work on Tuesday. I don't go back till Wednesday. Ain't that fun? Hopefully, I'm going to have finished in a summer season by Elizabeth Taylor by then, because I meant to finish that in April. And I want to read The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie, which is a book I borrowed from the library on my phone. And there is another book that I'm reading for the Booktube Prize on there, which I really should start making some headway on. I've read about four pages. It's one of those books that I know, had I not got to read it for the Booktube Prize, then I wouldn't be reading it at all. It's definitely not for me, but I can't allow that to have any bearing on how I judge. I have to judge it on the actual content of the thing. <sighs> Also, I really need to curb my book buying from the charity shop because I've been in every day this week. Well, every day that I have been in this week, I've acquired another book. Yesterday, I got The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoot by David Mitchell, which is, an, I think I, I have this, Black Swan Green and Number Nine Dream to read. And then I've done all of the David Mitchell novels that are currently available. Um, I, what is this here? I also got Excellent Women by Barbara Pym because is it Sean the book maniac who um, has read Barbara Pym and exalts her and because it was there I thought I have a select group of writers that I want to read and once I finish Elizabeth Taylor's works I want to get to reading Barbara Pym amongst others. And then today, what did I get today? Today I got the first Miss Silver book by Patricia Wentworth which is Grey Mask published in the 1920s and I keep thinking that I could join Katie of Books and Things 1900 to 1950s read-along, read-a-thon because that seems to be the time period that I'm reading from most at the moment and which I'm enjoying. But I can't be joining a readathon. Uh, not because I don't want to support Katie, but because I'm terrible at readathons. It's just the na nature of things. I don't do well in any terms of like prescribed reading, basically. Um, and I know that I'm getting to choose the, my own books here, but it just wouldn't work out. <sighs> But I have got a plan of what I want to read this month. Either way, you're only going to be with me for the first four days. Tuesday. I'm finishing this. I don't, I don't care. I, I will let you in on a secret, though. This is the second time that I tried to vlog in recent weeks. I want to do a vlog because I've been watching a lot of vlogs. And... I'm finding them calming, I'm finding them just what I need to watch at the moment, and I'm really enjoying the format. Um, but I'm also recording a lot of videos and never uploading them, and I've been doing that for months now, because for whatever reason, I just, I'm very worried that what I'm uploading isn't worth anything. Anyway, I also just wanted to show off this new shirt, because 
I recorded an entire wool gathering video in it and now I don't know whether I'm going to make it available because I feel like I was too maudlin in that video. Someone I haven't seen, a customer, in over a year now, I because of just the way the world has been. And she turned up today and didn't recognise me because of weight loss. Um, and I did talk about this in the wool gathering video that I might not share, but it's really, it's a strange thing because I don't think that I look that different, but everybody else is really astounded and that's not me blowing my own trumpet here. Um, and it's the shock that really, I don't know, I find somewhat weird. It makes me question whether I didn't realise how I was perceived by other people years ago. But either way, she complimented that and then she complimented my hair and called it avant-garde and hey if we're gonna call it avant-garde then let's keep it long, I don't know. Anyway, the dog's scratching at the door so I'll probably see you tomorrow and this hair won't be avant-garde then I'll be wearing a hat. You know what they say about the best laid plans? So I planned on getting up this morning, taking the dog up to the forest, having a wander around and then coming back and reading a lot of In a Summer Season by Elizabeth Taylor. But I didn't do that. I'm still in my pyjamas. Oh, I don't wear pyjamas, but the clothes that I wear to bed. Still in them. And it's ten past four in an afternoon. I've read 40 pages of In a Summer Season. Fantastic book, by the way. Really enjoying this, the prose of Elizabeth Taylor's, and have been ever since I first read her years ago when I read Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont. I am finding that... I prefer her later books. This is from 1961 and Mrs Palfrey at the Claremont is also late in her career as well but all of her writing has impressed me. I think in her later books there is a lot more going on between the lines and I'm enjoying how she presents that. I'm enjoying doing the work as a reader. I'm enjoying the insight that she has into characters' minds. I really appreciate how perceptive she is and I like her use of description and her characterization. One thing that I just don't understand is the fact that Elizabeth Taylor is such a big fan of Jane Austen and I really don't get on with Austen's prose and I know that Elizabeth Taylor's biggest thing was that she wanted to emulate Austen and yet I really I don't see that there. Maybe it is there and it's a more modern take. And I say this, having talked about how I don't think I'm going to try and read Jane Austen because I feel like I would be denigrating a writer for no good reason, knowing that I'm not going to enjoy it. The only thing that could get me to read Austen is Elizabeth Taylor because she enjoys her work so much. But I know that I've tried it before and not enjoyed it. Either way, Elizabeth Taylor's not Austen and I find her humorous and dark and we get on prose wise. Uh, in this book Kate the protagonist has married Dermot who's 10 years younger than her and everyone thinks that it's wrong. Dermot is more of a friend to her son due to the age he is and then this friend of hers from the past Charles has just arrived and you're getting a sense that something happened when Kate was married previously to a man who has died and something's happened in this friendship group. It'll be interesting to see how that works out because there is definite darkness here. Dermot is definitely a bit territorial and Dermot's reminding me of what's his name? You're in A Wreath of Roses. Richard. Dermot's quite reminiscent of Richard from A Wreath of Roses. I'll be interested to see how that plays out. I've got 90 pages left of that one. 
to read today. But I've washed my bedding because Sunday is usually wash day. Sunday is usually the day I wash my bedding and I have a nice long soak in the tub, either reading or listening to a radio play or an audio book. I haven't decided what yet. Um, but like I say, I do have Grey Mask by Patricia. Patricia Wentworth here, which is the first in the Miss Silver series, and I've never come across it before. I read two of the Miss Silver books years back, pre-booktube, very much a precursor to Miss Marple, so <sighs> there's that. And then, earlier today, I remembered some things that I'd forgotten, and that was that I planned to spend the month of May reading the collected stories of Catherine Mansfield. Now, I think I found out that this does actually contain every single one of Mansfield's stories now. Uh, and after reading Ali Smith's Seasonal Quartet, I wanted to go back and read the stories of Mansfield because they had inspired the author. So my plan was to try and read one short story from this collection every day. Then I found out if I did that, I wouldn't be finished until July. I think some of the stories are quite short. And it's very possible, you know, it's very easy to read this book in a month. I feel like it would be a nice thing to read going to bed at night, just reading a short story and having that done, as opposed to reading a novel and possibly wanting to continue reading and going to bed. I don't know, I don't need to let you into what's going on in my head. But that's just a bit of my reading. <sighs> Nothing's happened today. Nothing. I got up with the intention of reading and Sally wanted to play so I played with the dog and then I read for a bit. Now my sister came home and I was chatting to my sister and I continued to read and pick up the book and read but <sighs> 60 pages. I tend to read about a page a minute or two pages a minute so let's just say I've managed to get like an hour's reading in. An hour's reading in an entire day. Drag Race Down Under went online today and I've not watched that and I don't even know whether I'm going to find the time to watch it today. Line of Duty's on this evening, the final episode of this series. Ugh. My brother brought his dogs home and played with them for about an hour and fussed over them. And it's just a case of... I don't know. It's a case of feeling like I'm not achieving anything and that leaves me feeling frustrated and then I think but you shouldn't be so hard on yourself about reading. You do it for fun. <laughs> it's this weird quandary I'm in at the moment. I have all of these plans to try and read stuff slowly. I repurchased Anna Karenina and in my head I was always going to read that in May but I feel like I can't read Mansfield and Anna Karenina at the same time unless I really amped up how much of the latter I read. And some of them I worry that because of the mood I've been in, it's just a fad and my want to read them will disappear. So I think I need to read them faster, but then, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna beg her off and I'm gonna read a bit, hopefully. Sometimes reading feels like it's less about the entertainment when I'm on the internet. Like, I feel like if I wasn't reading for booktube, I'd be reading more. It's Monday and it's blowing a gale outside. Really wet and windy. Once again, it's been a day of not leaving my pyjamas. Uh, well, and they are actually pyjamas today, apart from the shirt. I put it on for this video. <sighs> my plan to go out and drive to the forest again to take the dog for a walk didn't happen because of the rain. And yes, I am a fair weather walker. <sighs> Something of a lie, really. I don't mind when it's foggy or whether it's cold. I don't mind a light drizzle, but absolutely pelting it down with rain whilst there's tons of wind going about. I just wasn't feeling that today. So I finished reading In a Summer Season by Elizabeth Taylor instead. And mm. 
it's a weird one to read a book so summary and when the day was like this. And I'm not sure how I feel about it because when I first started this, this was up there as it was humorous. There was this bl the wry humour that blended well with the pathos and the darker parts of this story. We're dealing with Kate who was a widow and has married a man who's 10 years her junior and she knows that people are judging her for that. And you get to see these different generations all dealing with love in different ways. Uh, Dermot, who she's married, you get to see the way that he loves and how that's different even just by even just a few years to the way that her son Tom loves and then you have this childish infatuation between Louisa and Father Blizzard and it's great to see this because what we have here is similar to a lot of the post-war novels which discuss the way the world has changed and society in England at the time has changed uh, after the war and there's discussion in here by Tom's grandfather who is Kate's fa former father-in-law uh, to do with the fact that um, Araminta who is Tom's love interest is so forthright and so different to the way women were when he was courting and they were part of the suffragette movement and had I feel like this book is somewhat let down a bit by its second half again you have the subtext and a lot where you can basically Elizabeth Taylor wants you to see how predictable this narrative is and because the novel is predictable the writer leans on the reader a lot to do the work for her without really having to give special mention to anything that's happening Throughout there is this sense of how else do you expect the story to go really? <sighs> and I'm not sure how I feel about that because there is a lot in here that I found funny and I appreciated these different discussions about the ways that different generations love and the way in which later generations have educated themselves about love and how it makes them feel and indeed how the impression that the younger people's love they can remember aspects of their life and how they were then but at the end of the day the predictability when something happens maybe two-thirds of the way through and it mentions something I thought I know how this story is going to end it ended that way then there was about a page long chapter to get that went a year later as a form of epilogue is it a sense of predictability to the narrative or is it a sense of inevitability? That's my question with this one. Throughout the reading I was looking forward to rereading as I often do with Taylor because she has some fascinating descriptions and I really do enjoy the aspect of reading her books and thinking about going back and measuring it up and comparing it to the other Taylors that I've read and being reminded of characters that Taylor has shared with us before. Indeed Dermot is very much like the male protagonist in A Wreath of Roses. Is it enough that a novel that is really descriptive and is it enough if I've enjoyed the writing to say it's a good book? Should not all the aspects come together to create a better narrative really. I just feel like that final part was rushed and that we didn't examine the characters as, as wholeheartedly as we had done in the first part but maybe the introduction of Charles and Araminta is the inciting incident that gets this story to move along faster and before that Dermot and the lives of the rest of the Heron clan are stagnating and it takes this push for them to actually begin living and loving again and maybe recognising some of the mistakes we've they have made. I don't know, again, it's Elizabeth Taylor. I enjoyed it as I have enjoyed all of her books in the past. <sighs> I felt it lacked the inquisitive sense that the rest of the novel had had. But again, I, I'm not giving up on this writer. I really enjoy her books for the most part. So 
after that, whilst I was waiting for a video to encode so that I could edit it, I read the first two chapters of The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie by Muriel Spark. And this is light and funny and already I have been reminded by of the girls of Slender Means that I read a few months back. So that's fun. Sorry, I just found some dirt on my trouser leg. Um, and yeah, I didn't... I didn't start reading any Mansfield yesterday, but I'm hoping to try and get some read this week, or this month at least. Maybe it will have to be that book I dip in and out of, similar <laughs> to the Italian comic book I read last year, and just read them as and when I've got some spare moments to dedicate to a story. We'll see. Um, I don't know what my plans are for the rest of the day. I want to record some more videos. Um, the only reason I've been recording on my bed these last few days is because I really, really don't want to have to keep clearing off all of the books where I usually sit and then put them all back and repeat. So we'll see. I have a wrap up that I want to record. So if that happens, great stuff. Great. Um, but. I'll see you tomorrow, and I might leave it a bit later before recording tomorrow because it'll be the final clip. And so far, I've only read In the Summer Season. Ugh. <laughs> what sort of book tumor am I? Uh, book tumor? <laughs> book tumor? What sort of book tumor am I that I've recorded a vlog where nothing happens? A reliable one, because I always record vlogs where nothing happens. What do you take me for? I can't record anywhere else in this house. There's always people home. Can't even leave the house currently because it's... Well, it's blowing that much of a gale that she must be thrilled. I'll see you tomorrow. It's freezing in my room today absolutely freezing despite the fact that we have double glazing it's windy outside and my windows must be that poorly done that the curtains keep getting blown by the wind anyway so my room is like an ice box which is fine it means that sleeping is going to be great this evening if it remains this cold it's tuesday this is the last day that i am going to be talking in this vlog, which is great, which is fantastic, which means that I actually stuck to something. I just had to be off work for three days for a bank holiday. About two minutes ago, I finished reading The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie by Muriel Spark. It's good. It's funny. It's the type of book where I don't know whether I'm smart enough to understand everything that's being said, but I think that if I were to go back and reread it and maybe look at it more closely, I would understand all of the context behind certain jokes and I think there needs to be a very definite idea of what was going on historically in order to understand certain things that happened within the text. I also would be interested to know about Muriel Sparks' writing method, like the her process, because every time I read her books it feels like there isn't any direction. Muriel Spark is figuring out how this story is going to go as she writes. I also think that it's very of its time. This isn't a bad thing. I find that stylistically it's quite reminiscent of the other books that were being written in the time period. I think that this book came out in the 60s. I enjoyed it. I remembered something earlier today that I meant to share and it was the the reason I have never read this book previously is because for whatever reason I had got it into my head that the prime of Miss Jean Brodie was a cowboy book. I don't know what it was. There was something in my head that every time I heard that title I thought surely that means cowboys. 
And I was prepared for this Western narrative that I never thought in a month of Sundays I would enjoy. And it's not. It's a book set in a school in Scotland. And I will admit to some frustration with how many times Miss Brodie talked about how she was in her prime and how the girls that she was educating would talk about that as well. I think that there are currently writers trying to emulate Muriel Spark for her brevity and I was reminded of MC Beaton whilst reading this book because of how fast it moved and how there is so much dialogue and how the story is a bit all over the place taking you in various different directions moving backwards and forwards over decades. The discussions of sex were humorous and I mentioned that because I think that Spark managed to capture the childlike ignorance about sex very well and did it in a way that didn't seem patronising, it seemed realistic and the realism added to the comedy of it. I think that there was too much time spent in certain years sometimes and that I would have appreciated seeing the characters when they were older. Uh, I would have appreciated more idea as to why the student who chose to bring about Miss Brodie's downfall brought it about. The way it's written seems like a very big snap decision. For my own sensibilities, I would have liked a bit more structure, some more focus on plot. That does seem to be the thing with Muriel Spark when it comes to her writing, is that it is very flash in the pan, being pulled along at a rapid pace through the story, sometimes with barely any chance to breathe, having to gather up characters and figure out who they are as you go, without any real idea as to who they are at all. And that's the thing, I don't know that we ever get a proper sense of who characters are, but at the same time there's this thing where I think that Muriel Spark's done a good job of giving you an idea of who a character is in very few words. Sometimes I was reminded of some of my favourite descriptions. There are great moments in here of storytelling that I wish had been utilised more throughout the entire narrative because when I read them and I saw them I was really happy as a writer to see that. Something I try to create with my own writing and it's similar to the oral storytelling tradition but it's also similar to the way in which when people in the street are gossiping they would tell a story and they would describe a person. The dialogue, Muriel Sparks dialogue is fantastic and had she been a scriptwriter, had this been a script, it would have been great. And I do think I will be going and watching the film adaptation of this book. I think it's a book I'll go and reread because I think that there is more to unpick in here. But I, I also think that Muriel Spark is a writer I will go to for light, relief and comedy. It still felt lacking. I'm glad to be reading Muriel Spark. Finally, it's another writer off the list of writers I wanted to read, but I didn't care for this book as much as I thought I would do. So what are my plans for the rest of today? Well, today, I actually planned on sleeping in for a minute because it's my last day off before I go back to work tomorrow. I'm only in one day, then I've got Thursday off and then I'm back in for the weekend. And so I thought, oh, I'll sleep in for a bit. Well, I awoke from a nightmare. I could hear the dog scrabbling around outside. So I thought, I'll open my door. She can have a kip in my bed for a bit. And that was fine. I forgot that my sister was coming home with floss. So Sally went flying out of my bed at one point. And then they all came back upstairs. Floss came into my room. Sally was ready to play with floss. Floss jumped on my head to get away from Sally because she thought that she'd be able to go to sleep in my bed. And then Floss was annoyed at the little dog for waking me up, not knowing that the little dog had already been in bed with me. So Floss ended up sitting on top of my head to try and 
keep the other dog away from me and didn't realise she was nearly suffocating me and one of them scratched me on the head. <sighs> and my mother's gone to see her mother and brother, which means that I've got to make tea. My father came home with a lamb, a live one, well, semi-alive. He's trying to bring it back to life in the living room as we speak. It's sat in front of the gas fire. And that means the dogs are in the crate. And I might just hide out in my room for a bit because I'm going to have to make tea tonight. Nobody's washed up again. So I'll have to do that as well. But I just want to read. Again, I still haven't read any Catherine Mansfield. Every time I come upstairs now, I feel like this book is glowering at me. Earlier on in this video, I said I wasn't going to read this book over three months. I wasn't going to read a story a day here and there. Now I don't see a problem in that. But I have many books that I wanted to get to this month. I'm going to be reading My Dark Vanessa next, which is a book I have to read for the Booktube Prize. Then I have some more, well I have two more to read after that and they're going to be my next re the reads for this week. And then it'll be goodbye to the Booktube Prize and I'll be focusing on getting some of the books that I want to read read. If you have read any of the books that I've talked about in this video and you would like to discuss them, please feel free to do so in the comments below. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.